Hey, freshmen. Today, we are going to take a few minutes and talk about Bilbo's steps of his hero's journey. These steps are going to be in reference to the notes that we took at the very beginning of the unit. And uh, we used the Odyssey originally to talk about those because we talked about them at the end of the Odyssey before we started reading The Hobbit. And now we need to take a look at Bilbo's journey to see how his steps fit with the hero's journey. So as I said, we took notes on this at the very beginning of the unit. Um, so you might want to locate those notes review those steps to begin with, because this is going to be our next step to, to map these out for Bilbo. So as we discussed in those original notes, not every step of a hero's journey is uh, going to be included for each particular hero. So Bilbo is going to just go through a certain number of hero's journey steps and in a certain order. So you're going to need to know all of the hero's journey steps still, so make sure that you study those original notes. If you cannot find your notes that you took, you should um, take a look at the review checklist on Schoology, and it, there's a link to a PDF version of those notes. Those will help you study for that portion of the test. This is going to be included with that as well. So Bilbo's Hero's Journey, let's go ahead and, and talk through some of these things. So the first thing that we need to make sure that we understand before we look at the, the steps of the Hero's Journey is what Bilbo's ordinary world is like. In order to become a hero, he needs to leave an ordinary world behind and make some sort of transformation and metamorphosis, a change, if you will. So Bilbo's life pre-adventure, he lived in a really nice home, in a hobbit hole, in a shire, very scenic uh, location. He enjoys the comforts of his, of his home, um, and he's wealthy. He's to-do, so he has a lot of nice things. He's a nice home. He has rooms of clothing. Um, and he eats very often, se several meals a day, breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, second lunch, snacks in between, anything you can think of. If he wants to eat, he's going to eat. And that's why he's got a little bit of a gut. And he dislikes anything that's adventurous or unexpected. It just wasn't respectable for a hobbit to go on an adventure. Okay, so that's Bilbo's ordinary pre-adventure life. That's changed when Gandalf comes to visit him. And well, let's talk about the first two steps together because they happen very quickly back to back. Bilbo is called to adventure by Gandalf, who shows up and says, I'm looking for somebody to join me in an adventure. And Bilbo immediately shuts him down and says, no, thank you. We don't want any of that. I thank you, but no thank you kind of thing. And uh, Gandalf is not deterred, right? He leaves a little mark on Bilbo's door, and that encourages the dwarves to show up at Bilbo's home. And that's where they basically say, no, you're going on the adventure. So that's the call to adventure, Gandalf's call to Bilbo. Let's go on an adventure. And then Bilbo's refusal of the call saying, no, I'm, I'm very fine with, with sticking to my ordinary world. Thank you very much. So elements of supernatural aid that we see Bilbo accumulate or use over the course of the story are his sword, Sting, that uh, it also lights up when there are goblins nearby so he can tell when there's danger present. He also has the ring that he ends up actually kind of stealing from Gollum that turns him invisible, which helps out on a number of occasions. And he's got the help and guidance and wisdom of Gandalf the wizard. Okay, all of these elements, it can be people or it can be items, but those are all parts of Bilbo's supernatural aid. So his crossing the, the first threshold is his um, taking the adventure into his own hands, deciding that he is going to go on this journey. Um, and so he decides that he is actually going to join them. So even though he woke up late, even though he didn't really think that he wanted to go on the adventure, he still joins anyway. It's it's that sense of adventure that took side, right? His mother's side, Belladonna took. That side takes over and it sends him on this ad adventure. And when he sprints out of the Shire to go meet up with the dwarves who have already started their trek, that's when he decides that he is going to, to do this for himself. That's his crossing the first threshold. The next step, the belly of the whale, is actually the step where he meets or encounters his first danger. He realizes that he's not in the Shire anymore. And for Bilbo, it's the, the, the interaction with the trolls, okay? So these three trolls, very stupid, they're very hungry, um, and they're not kind, right? They don't stand to reason at all. Um, they're also easily fooled. So Bilbo tries to steal from them, and that leads to a, a capture of, of him and his, his companions, and Gandalf has to come in and save the day. So not every undertaking that the hero goes on ends up being successful. And that's okay, right? We all learn from our mistakes. Bilbo is no different. And in this case, he had to learn from his mistake of rushing into a situation without thinking it all the way through, especially with a type of creature, the troll, that he has never encountered before. Okay, so that's his belly of the whale, the first sign that he's not at home anymore. The Road of Trials possibly takes up the most 
amount of time in any hero story. It's a number of different um, challenges that a hero needs to overcome that prepare them for the big boss challenge at the end. Okay, so this includes um, the Mirkwood spiders and Black River. This includes the goblins, the wargs, Gollum. Um, you could even see that the trolls are part of this as well. You can kind of pull double time here. Um, they run into the wood, wood elves. Um, so anything that comes up as a challenge for Bilbo and serves to like better prepare himself for the atonement with the father, um, the mission of his journey at, towards the end, that's going to fall into this road of trials step. Okay. Um, we didn't have any females uh, noteworthy in the story. There were no female characters. So woman is temptress can be kind of tricky when that happens. But this is just the step where anything can tempt the hero away from their journey. And there's a couple of times where Bilbo very strongly considers quitting the, uh, the journey altogether because it just sounds so much more comforting to be at home and eating wonderful food, wonderful breakfasts and second breakfasts and third breakfasts and all, all of that. So Bilbo's desire, his, his homesick nature ends up being his temptation. Anytime he's tempted to quit, he's thinking about food and he's thinking about home. So the atonement with the father step is when Bilbo confronts Smaug face to face. Remember Bilbo's journey, his part of the journey, his part of the mission is to be a burglar. So who is he burglaring? Burglarizing? <laughs> he's, uh, he's trying to steal from Smaug, right? The great dragon that has uh, taken over the mountain. So this is his atonement with the father. And sometimes father can be, like we've talked about in the notes, really literal, like in Star Wars, um, when Darth Vader reveals himself to be Luke, Luke Skywalker's father. But in most cases, the father is just, it's whoever holds the power in the hero's life, which is typically the villain of the story. So anytime a hero directly confronts their villain um, in a really climactic scene, probably two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way through a story, that's going to be the atonement with the father. The ultimate boon uh, goes very, it's very closely correlated with that. This is the goal of the mission. The goal is to defeat Smaug, it's to reclaim the treasure, and most, most specifically, it's to find the Arkenstone. Um, that ends up being a bigger deal later on in the story as we find out. So that's the, the ultimate goal, right? Defeating Smaug, reclaiming the treasure, reclaiming their home, and then specifically the Arkenstone. So the return steps of the journey. Bilbo's return home with his portion of the treasure and, and his success, it, it unfortunately includes a giant battle between five armies. We just talked about this, right? The battle of the five armies, you've got wargs and goblins and elves and uh, the dwarves and the men from Lake Town. Everybody wants a piece of this treasure. They all feel specifically entitled to it for a number of reasons. So what you see in this image is a chaotic depiction of what this battle might have looked like. So you've got a whole bunch of different sides fighting and, and the return journey is usually very difficult for the hero. Even though they've accomplished something great in achieving the ultimate boon, they need to somehow get back home, right? They're still in the world of the adventure. And so this is Bilbo's first step towards being able to return home, okay? And then his rescue from without, Bilbo is saved by the eagles on a number of occasions, uh, twice to be specific, um, and so were his companions. Bjorn comes in. Um, remember, Bjorn is half man, half bear, and he is able to help out in the Battle of Five Armies. So we see a number of different ways that these, these heroes are helped. This might also take the shape of um, just needing to rest, right? When they take their rest at Lake Town before they make that final push to the mountain, that's also a rescue from without. They've been injured uh, in the barrel sequence and feel demoralized, so they need to rest up, recharge, refeed themselves, um, and be prepared for uh, their, their final journey to, to the mountain. Okay, so all of that, anytime a hero needs to be replenished, um, rejuvenated, that's gonna be that rescue from without. So a lot of times this might happen several times in the story at several different points in the story. And then the final step of, of Bilbo's hero's journey that I wanna talk about is that when he becomes the master of two worlds um, and he is able to have the freedom to live. Okay, so that's two steps that we kind of see in the same, they're represented in the same last couple of pages of uh, the book, the, that last interaction that Bilbo has with others. So we find out in the last couple of pages that Bilbo has been living a long, happy, comfortable life, um, living back in his home in the Shire. And at the very, very end, he's visited by some old friends. He's visited by Gandalf and Balin. And he is now um, wearing his success, right? He's wearing fancier clothes. He's got actual golden buttons, which sounds really fancy. 
And uh, Balin, he's showing his success. His beard is longer, which shows more wisdom gained. Um, he's wearing a nicer belt. Um, and so they can just sit down as equals at this point. Now that Bilbo's become a hero, he's on the same level as Gandalf and Balin. So we finally see that he's the master of two worlds, uh, being a respectable hobbit now. I mean, he's, now he's staying his days um, in the Shire. And he doesn't really care if other people don't think that he's respectable, right? And he's also mastered the world of the adventure, which is shown by his friendship with Gandalf and Balin. Okay? And he's got the freedom to live. I mean, you can see the last little... Um, cell of the image on your screen right now. You can see that he's just very happy and content. He is not worried anymore about danger. He just is living a happy life. Okay. So those are the Bilbo steps of his hero's journey. If you've got any questions about any of that or want any clarification, just let me know. Send me a message on Schoology. I'd be happy to uh, talk about this further. Um, hopefully this helps you out. Remember to check off the other things on your review checklist to be fully prepared for that test this week. And uh, happy studying.